All right, um, currently working on a Briggs and Stratton 10 horsepower or 362cc industrial engine. This engine I recovered from a friend who found it on an old auger, grain auger that was being scrapped and in western New South Wales. This particular engine was made in 1985, had not been run in a long time. I've managed to get it running, but in doing so, I damaged the gasket within the carburetor. Luckily with Briggs and Spratton, I was able to get a replacement and now I'm going to talk through replacing the carburetor gasket on a Briggs and Stratton stationary engine. So I've done a little bit of work to this already. It does run, um, but not too well until it gets this gasket. So let's quickly go around. Now, as you can see, this has had a patch job done on the muffler. That's something else that's coming. And I'm going to replace that. Luckily, there's aftermarket parts for it. So there's our carburetor there. Now, a few things that make life easier. A 10, 11, 12 mil spanner. Half inch socket. Flathead. And just some Nice little pliers, just something with a fine long head on it to pull out a pin, which we'll show you. All right, so first things first, got to allow access so we can take the carburetor off. So I have to take a few parts off. For instance, I'm now taking the filter off. I'll take the exhaust off and then we are in business. So bear with me. Is tedious. Now we will also need a rag because we will be undoing the fuel line as well and there'll be a little bit of residue fuel in the line so they best have a rag just to catch it. Not a whole lot, doesn't hold much. Um, now we will need, it's a tool I forgot, a small Phillips head just to undo that clamp on the fuel line so I can unscrew that. Now there's filter coming off. Let me just grab the Phillips head. Alright. So this is an 11 mil on the fuel line. Just so that it twists enough. There we go. Again, 11. Just so we don't bind anything up. Residue fuel, catch that, pull out of the way. Next, we will do the exhaust. So we've got one, I believe 11 on top. Look there. Won't take much to undo this one. Here 
are 12. Unfortunately, they're damaged 12. Took a bit of heat to get these undone initially, but we are in business. Exhaust off. Now, that has allowed us to get into these two. Now, before we take that off, there's a few other things we need to do first. So, one of them is, as you can see, just in there, there's an earthing wire that's connected down here, if it'll zoom in. So we just need to Pull that off so we don't pull it out. Now the other thing too is if you can see in there, there's this little rubber hose that's coming through. We just need to push that out. I said for an engine made in 1985, older than me, the rubber's still in really good nick. That's something I'm not going to have to replace. All right, now pop that out. It's nice and loose. So when you take the carburetor off, it'll just come straight out. Now, attached to the carburetor is the throttle, and at the back is a little rod connecting to the throttle. Here you can see it is on a spring. Now, unfortunately, that means we have to take off this whole bottom assembly, which is a bit of a pain, so we'll do that now. And that is where our socket comes in handy. Oh, a little bit of tension on that so I don't tip the hole. There we go. What's that? Now the other one is that the spring is held on is this little one here. So that's where our 10 mil comes in handy. Now this bolt here is just a retaining lock so if we give it a little tap it should come off again flat head comes in handy here on this side in here see it's just coming off there now all right so now that everything on the bottom half is loose we can undo these two and we can take off the carburetor so from memory, they are either 11 or 12. They're going to be a 12. There is a little gasket in here. No, they are an 11. I was right the first time. Just needed, there we go. Long and slow process. There we go. Get my fingers in there now. One. That should be a little easier from memory. There we go.
as you can see, it's starting to drop, so it is loose. Let's hold it up there so we don't do any damage. Right, carburetor is loose. As we can see, throttle, and there is fuel leaking out of it. That's exactly where our gasket is, or isn't in this case. So that's the one we've got to replace. So now to get this bottom part off the carburetor, there is an 11. Now some fuel should drain out of this, so grab our handy rag. Now if you have a look on the back, you see there's our throttle rod. So a little bit of manipulation and out it comes. Alright, so I'll put that over here. So if we have a look again, just drain it, a bit of excess fuel in there. Now, again, this is where our flathead comes in handy. These four bolts here. Again, these were not tight when I did it up. Just because I wanted to put it back together for this video. Now, the other one you're going to want it undo I'll put governor down the bottom last one Now, the other thing you'll notice is that you might be able to see it just in there. See that little rod sticking up coming this way? Connected to our little governor down here that we also need to take out. Now, I believe that's a, another 11. Undo that. It was not this easy to undo the first time. It had years and years of desert dust on it. Again, come out, make sure you do not damage this. Put it somewhere nice and safe. Now, if we have a look on the inside, you'll see, again, our flathead is going to come in handy. I might need to go down the size on the flathead. Bear with me. I went too big. Got a couple just in case. Again. See there, I'm unwinding it. Out she comes. Again, something we don't want to damage. We'll put that down there. Now, let's give her a little jiggle. She should start to come up. There's our float. Beautiful. All right, so gasket covers this here, but it doesn't go here to be in with. As you can see, took a bit to clean this out. Still a bit of cleaning to do, but it is running at the moment. So let's put that down. Now this is a fiddly bit. So the gasket goes on here and it goes over 
this mechanism here that holds the float. So that's where our needle nose pliers come into play. Again, there's a little retention spring in there that is connected to that little valve in there that the float controls. So, see that little one in there? Oh, let's get a better view. That little one there should come out just like that. Put that one somewhere very safe. And then if you have a look in here, that floats come off. And that's come out. Again, keep it somewhere very safe. Now, new gasket. Careful not to bend it unnecessarily. Now this is why we had to take it apart because see here how it slides over it. Very nice cut gasket by the way. But that's why we had to take it all apart on the fiddly side. And it's a matter of putting it all back together then giving it a run. So if we... This one in there. Now this is a fiddly bit. Again, it's all about that little spring there. It has to go behind. Pop that in there. Now. Be careful again not to rip the gasket. There we go. Pushing it in. Not pretty happy with that. Sure, it does push that down and lift it out. All right, now, yeah, moment of truth. If it's in there, and get out four screws. Again, don't tighten one before you get them all in in case it does move a little bit and drop them all in just like that in case there is a little obstruction And then you pretty much reverse the entire process that I've just shown you. I'll spare you the boredom on that. And that's how you fit a carburetor gasket to a 1985 10 horsepower Briggs & Stratton stationary engine.